Hello everyone. Happy Tuesday. It's five o'clock, which means it's time for Tuesday Live at Five. I'm Lena Gursa, an independent demonstrator for Stampin' Up! from Cambridge, Ontario, and I am here today to talk about the beautiful new Pressed Petals Suite from the brand new Creativity is Calling Stampin' Up! catalog. So these are the three projects I'm going to share with you today, but before I do that, I want to show you all of the amazing products in this suite. And just while I'm getting things going here, I want to pull up my video. I'm gonna watch on my iPad, or have it going at the same time at least, so that I can see your comments because it's really hard sometimes. Oh, there I am. It's hard to see sometimes on my phone while I'm shooting the video. So here we go. I am going to show you where to find this suite in the catalog. So here is that brand new catalog. I hope you all have a copy. And if you don't, you let me know and I will get one to you like ASAP. Okay. So this beautiful new suite is found on pages 72 and 73 and actually 74 of the catalog. So it is a beautiful layout. I'm going to show you each one of the products up close and personal. And we're going to use several of them today. Um, the suite includes stamp set, um, an embossing folder, dies, embellishments, ribbon, DSP, washi tape. Honestly, this is an awesome suite for so many different products. So let me show you a little bit more closely um, what is included in the suite. So first of all, I'm going to get these cards out of the way for a minute. First of all, we kind of have the centerpiece of the suite, and that is, as usual, um, a stamp set and die bundle. Sometimes it's a stamp set and a, and a punch bundle, but this time it's a stamp set and dies. Um, the stamp set, this is a three-step stamping set, which is um, awesome because you can get three different colors in your stamped image when you're finished. Um, this works really, really well with the Stamparatus, okay? So you can stamp your leaves in one color, and then your flowers in another, and then your sort of little... I don't know even what those are, ferns maybe, um, in yet another color and get some really, really awesome um, stamped images. And then it has some beautiful sentiments. And I love stamp sets that include both um, images and sentiments. Oh, hi, Nancy. Glad you could join me today. Um, I hope you're having a good day. I hope it's beautiful where you are. It's beautiful here. Um, so I love when we have stamp sets that have images and sentiments because it just makes the project so much easier to put together. So that's our stamp set. And then we have these beautiful dies. So this is a set of three dies. Um, this one cuts a large oval and it's a really detailed oval. You're going to see what that die cut looks like in a few minutes. And then we have these two that are designed to work together or not. Okay, so this is another um, sort of floral label. And then there is a, a, a sort of insert piece that is used to cut an oval that will layer on this label. Or if you want to cut a window in your label, you can center that in there and cut a window as well. So there are a few different ways to use that. And again, we're going to use those today. Okay, so that is the bundle. Now, let me show you the gorgeous DSP. This is my favorite thing in this suite. So the DSP is, well, it's all been photographed. It's, it's actual photos of pressed flowers, okay? So the Stampin' Up! Um, designers actually took pressed flowers and photographed them. So we have these beautiful florals, okay? I'll just show you um, each one in detail. So there's this one and this one and some greenery. This one is awesome because it has different size um, pieces with the background and everything that you can use on cards and projects. I'm gonna show you something that I did with that in a few minutes. We have this one and then this one. Okay, so those are gorgeous, but my favorite thing about this DSP is the reverse side of all of these. So we have some awesome um, sort of neutral, sort of vintage inspired background um, imagery on the back side of, these, of this DSP. So we have this one, it looks like a page from a floral journal. We have a gorgeous wood grain. So if you are mourning the loss of the Wood Textures DSP, more no more, we have this beautiful wood grain. This linen look, which I am gonna use a lot today. We have sheet music, it's like vintage manuscript sheet music, which excites me as a musician. And then we have a garden journal, 
Um, it looks like a vintage garden journal. And then we have this scripty, um, it's actually love poetry um, if you really want to look closely at it. So beautiful, beautiful, beautiful DSP. And honestly, I can see myself using these back sides a lot over the next few months. Okay, so that's the DSP. And then we also have some beautiful ribbon. This ribbon is Rococo Rose and gold. And it ties up really nicely. It's about three quarters of an inch. Is it three quarters or seven eighths? Oh, it says half inch. Okay, half inch wide ribbon. So it ties, it holds its shape really nicely. Okay, um, it's really, really quite forgiving and easy to, to make beautiful bows. It's gathered, so it has um, quite a bit of texture in the ribbon, and it's just really, really beautiful. So that is the ribbon. And then we have washi tape. So this is specialty washi tape. Stampin' Up! has never offered anything like this before. I'm gonna use this on all three projects today because I am seriously in love with this stuff. <laughs> You're gonna see it used, and I'll, I'll explain more about excuse me, more about that in a few minutes. And then we have this fun sort of vintage look um, as well. It looks almost like measuring tape. And then we have an embossing folder. So this is the new Scripty embossing folder. This is one of the new 3D folders. And I'm going to talk in a little bit about um, how to get your best results with this in a few minutes. And then we have these designer elements that come in gold, silver, and copper. You get 12 of each color in the package. These can make beautiful floral centers or just um, any kind of, if you any, anything you need a metallic um, accent on. And then we have um, these little journals and I love these little journals. So I went ahead and embellished mine. So there's some of that ribbon. I added it onto the binding. There is one of those pieces. Remember the DSP that had all the different panels? So this is one of the panels that I've cut. It fits perfectly on this little um, journal. I've created a little washi tape flower and I used um, just a sentiment from another stamp set and a bit of lace. And then on the inside again, there's another one of those panels. I used a little bit more ribbon, some more washi. Um, and this I'm going to use as a gratitude journal. And it has just lovely quotes um, that you can use and just to kind of get you thinking about how very blessed we are and to get you thinking and having an attitude of gratitude. I just love this. So I am excited to start using that this summer. Hi, Deneen. I love the washi, the petal washi too. I love it. And we're going to use it on all three projects. That's how much I love it. <laughs> Okay, so we're gonna get started. I have shown you all of the pro the products in the suite, and we are gonna start with this quick and easy vintage uh, thank you card. I, at this time of year, need to write a lot of thank yous, um, being a music teacher, so I have several colleagues I need to write thank you notes to, and this is going to be my thank you note this year. Um, so I started with some of that beautiful uh, music manuscript DSP. So I'm gonna pull that out. And as beautiful as it is, I'm going to crumple it. <laughs> Hi, Wendy. Thanks so much for sharing. So some people get very upset when I crumple DSP, but it's going to add some lovely texture. Okay. Now the trick with this is you want to try to avoid ripping it. Sometimes it's, it's hard to do. Now the nice thing about this DSP is it's a little bit lighter weight, um, which makes it easier to crumple and to get that kind of texture. But I really want to get lots of wrinkles. This is what some of the sheet music <laughs> I get back from my band students looks like at the end of the year, believe it or not. It's lived in the bottom of a backpack for months on end. So I'm just really softening this up and getting some nice yummy wrinkles in there. Look at that. Look at that texture. So this is a great way to add texture to your project without using an embossing folder or your big shot at all. Okay, so I'm going to smooth that out and then I'm going to grab my soft suede ink. Where did I put that? Put it in one of the other baskets. So I've got my soft suede ink. This is one of my favorite ways to sort of distress and, and add a sort of vintage feel to my project. So I'm going to take a dauber and my soft suede ink and I'm now going to just take and I'm going to swoosh it all over that paper and you're going to see that that's going to bring out those wrinkles. You see those wrinkles just kind of popping off there. And there's not really a wrong way to do this. I'm basically wanting to age this paper. I want it to look old and worn and like it's lived all semester at the bottom of a backpack. So I'm just going to just darken or so soften that down, okay? And a little bit over here. There we go. 
some nice aged vintage sheet music. So now that is going to form the um, background for my card. All right. So next I'm going to take a little bit of braided trim. So this is that beautiful braided trim that was in the holiday catalog last year and has carried over to this new annual. And I'm going to add a glue dot to either end. There we go. And I'm going to lay that across the front of my sheet music, so, sort of in the middle. I kind of want it in the middle-ish. And just wrap the ends around there. Now I'm going to be pretty, I'm going to keep this fairly loose because, again, I my, my paper is quite flimsy now that I've distressed it. And that's okay. And then I'm going to take also and add just a little glue dot in the middle so that this lies flat. Just like that. Okay. All right, now I'm ready to go ahead and glue that onto my card base. So here, oh, I forgot to tell you my dimensions here. So this started out as a piece of DSP that was cut to five and a quarter by four inches. Okay, so it was five and a quarter by four. I have my crumb cake card base that is five and a half by eight and a half, and I've scored it in the middle at four and a quarter. Okay, so I'm going to take and fold that in half along my score line. Grab my bone folder here. And then I'm going to go ahead and glue that right down onto my cardstock. Now I'm going to do something that I don't normally do. Usually I put my um, glue on the back of the piece that I'm gluing on. However, because this is so distressed and I'm using fast fuse, this is going to tear if I use my fast fuse. So I'm actually going to just run my adhesive around my card base. And that is going to keep my car my DSP from ripping. Now I am because I'm a musician. I have to make sure that my sheet music is right side up. There we go. I cannot create a card and have my music be upside down. That would be disastrous. So now I'm going to go ahead and just place this on, and I'm kind of stretching out some of those wrinkles a little bit as I'm as I'm gluing this down, just so that my um, piece lies somewhat centered. Okay, it's still going to curl at the corners and that's okay. I kind of want that. It adds again texture and dimension. But I just want the, the, the piece to lie flat on the front of the card. Okay, so that's my background done. Next, I have this label that I cut using the new Stitch Nested Labels. And this is that beautiful linen um, textured uh, pattern from the DSP pack. So it's got the ferns on the one side and the linen on the back. And I got to tell you, I just love this. It looks like fabric. Like it, you touch it and you expect it to feel like linen. It's just amazing. So I'm going to build myself a washi flower. So I'm going to show you how that works. So here I have the petal washi tape. So when you get it, you're going to want to kind of turn it around until you find, can you see that there is one petal? You can see the whole petal. See, all of these are layered all the way around, but there is one where you can see the entire petal. So that's where you're going to start peeling your petals off from. So I just kind of tease at the corner until I get a petal to come up. And then I'm going to stick it down just on that corner of my label. Okay, so there's one petal. And I'm going to take another one. This is like the quickest and easiest flower ever. So I'm going to kind of create my flower and I, I'm hoping to use six petals here. Sometimes I don't get it quite as, as um, symmetrical as I would like and I end up using a couple of extras just to fill in gaps, but that's our goal. Okay, so I've laid three petals down and then I'm going to pick up another one and add it. So I'm filling in the gaps here again. One. And two. And one more will give me just exactly what I'm after. There we go. There's my last petal. Okay, isn't that pretty? Like, honestly, how easy and beautiful is that little flower? Love, 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 love it. Okay, so now we are going to stamp our label. So I have already cut, this is that smaller floral label. This is cut from Mossy Meadow uh, cardstock, not Mossy Meadow. Yes, Mossy Meadow. <laughs> we used to have another um, cardstock color called Mellow Moss and I 
constantly am confusing those two. This is Mossy Meadow. And then this is that smaller oval that is designed to sit right inside that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and stamp my thank you on there. I'm going to stamp in Mossy Meadow ink. And I'm using the thank you stamp that is in the Path of Petals stamp set. So I'm going to go ahead and stamp this attempt to do it straight while not looking straight on. Nope, not good. We're going to try it again. This is harder to do than you might think when you are not looking straight on to your... Ah, it's tied, but that's okay. I can live with that. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and stick that down onto our label. I might just cut another one and hide that under there. You know what? I'll put that on there for now, and then I will hide it later. Okay, so I'm going to put a little bit of glue on there. And I'm going to center that on my label. Okay, and then that is going to get popped up onto my um, little DSP label here. So I'm going to add a couple of dimensionals. And we'll get rid of our backings. And then I'm just going to center that on my stitched label. It's hard to do when that's crooked, but that's okay. I can fix it later. And then we're going to add some more dimensionals and pop it onto our card. Okay, super quick and easy. Um, love this vintage DSP, this, this sheet music DSP, and this linen stuff, honestly. You just want to touch it because it looks that real. Okay, so I'm going to bring it back in my card base, and I'm going to stick my label down. Attempting to center it and get it somewhat straight. There we go. And then the last couple of touches, I'm going to add a little bow just to the center of my flower there. So this is a bow made from the braided linen trim. And the only reason I'm not tying this ahead of time is because I had a bunch of these bows pre-tied from another project. So <laughs> you're not getting a bow tying lesson yet. You will. Just not on this particular one, okay? And then I have one of these cute little bird ballad trinkets. This is not part of the suite. This is part of the bird ballad suite. But I thought that it worked rather well on this card. And there's my finished card. Super simple, right? All right, so that is project one. On the inside of this, did I do anything? Yeah, I stamped some of those flowers. So remember the flowers that I said you could do three-step stamping? Well, there they are. There's my leaves, my um, actual blossoms, and then these little ferns, okay? I didn't use my Stamparatus for this, so my alignment is not great, but if I had, it would have been way better, okay? All right, so let's set that aside and move on to our next project. I'm gonna keep this out because I'm gonna need it for something else. We'll get rid of that and we'll get rid of that and we'll set this aside. Okay, next one we're going to work on is this one. This is another really quick and easy one. In fact, I think this one's quicker and easier than the last one because we don't have the step of distressing. So for this one, I used both of the dies. So I used the large oval and the smaller oval label. La label. Wow, words are not coming easily to me today. Okay, so... I am going to show you what that label or that big oval looks like when it's cut out. So this started out as a four by five and a quarter inch piece of that linen DSP, okay? And um, I ran it through my Big Shot and once you're done, you it cuts out this really detailed intricate oval, which is just so pretty. And then I thought, well, it's so pretty, let's put some pretty DSP behind it. So I added a little bit of that scripty, um, love poem DSP and it's just gonna layer right behind it like that. Okay, so really easy to do now I don't know if you guys still have some multi-purpose adhesive sheets kicking around But it makes gluing this oval down really really easy um, If you don't <laughs> You can do it with our fine tip glue. You can do it with Tombow. Um, just in the interest of time in this video, I added a little bit of multi-purpose adhesive sheet. So now I'm gonna go ahead and try to glue this again, straight and centered while looking on from the side. So we're gonna stick it down right about there. I got a little bit showing, but that's okay. I can trim that. Okay, really easy. And then I'm gonna just trim off this excess bit that's peeking out. Um, my background piece, the, the scripty DSP piece, was also four by five and a quarter. Okay, so it's cut so that they just kind of line up nicely. 
And then I have a card base here. This is thick, very vanilla cardstock. And it is cut to five and a half by eight and a half. And it's scored in the middle at four and a quarter. Hello, Chrissy. Are you in, in Australia too? You must be because you're telling me good morning. Here it is, 5 p.m. <laughs> um, so I have, sorry, did I give you dimensions? I got distracted. Five and a half by eight and a half, scored in the middle at four and a quarter. I'm gonna fold in half along that score line and crisp it up with my bone folder. And then we're gonna go ahead and glue that piece on. Isn't that pretty? I absolutely adore that linen DSP. So I'm gonna add just a little bit of Fast Fuse. And again, I wanna make sure that I'm gluing my words so they're right side up. That's the trick with some of this DSP. Because it is directionally specific, you wanna make sure that your words are not upside down. Okay, so there is my background done. Really, really fast and easy. Next, I have a label. So this is that same label that I used on the last card, but doesn't it look different when it's cut out of that linen paper? It's just so, so pretty. I oh, can't get enough of it. Um, so what I'm going to do now is build a flower in the center of this label. So I'm going to bring back my petal washi. And honestly, you guys, like I've already ordered, I think, three or four more packs of this because I really can't get enough of it. So I'm going to build my flower so that it is centered on this label. Oh, you are in Australia, Chrissy. I thought perhaps you were. So you guys are heading into winter, right there? We are heading into summer and none too soon, if you ask me. It has been a rainy, yucky spring here. So we are ready for some summer warmth. So here I'm building, now this time I'm gonna build an eight petal flower. Okay, so I've kind of gone top, bottom. So I'm kind of going 12 o'clock, six o'clock, three o'clock, nine o'clock. If you're thinking about the direction of your petals. And we're just doing that. And then I'm going to offset them and I'm gonna add four more. I just wanted this flower to look a little bit fuller because it's really the focal point of this card. So you can use as many or as few of these. This, this stuff looks quite pretty even with just three petals. Um, it depends on the look you're going for. It is just the quickest, easiest thing. Like I just cannot get over how awesome this product is. And seriously, they need to come out with it in like every color <laughs> because I would buy it. And I think other people would too. I just think it is wonderful. Winter here is wet and windy. Yeah, we just came out of that and I'm not missing it <laughs> at all. Okay, so there is my flower. All right, now I have just a little strip. This is just a half inch by, I don't know, maybe four inch strip of very vanilla cardstock. And I'm gonna pull back in that thank you stamp that I was using earlier. And I need my soft suede ink. Where did you go, soft suede? There you are, hiding under a punch. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and stamp our thank you, and I'm gonna attempt to do a better job of it this time than I did last time. This will be easier because I'm on an actual strip here. Oh, not bad, a little crooked. Let's try again on the back. It is really hard to do this when you are looking sideways. That's better. Okay, so there's my thank you. And now I'm gonna use my little tailored tag trick to create my banner ends. So for those of you who haven't seen this before, um, oh, cold, yucky, not so nice, Wendy. Um, okay, so I'm gonna take my little strip and I'm going to slide it into my tailored tag punch and I'm gonna put it in until I see the sentiment. So can you see the U peeking in there? And then I'm gonna back it off. That's just to give me an idea of where my sentiment is and how long I want my, my strip to be, okay? And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Whoops, what am I doing? So there's my T, I'm gonna back it off. This one I'm gonna leave a little bit more space because I'm gonna put my bow on this end this time just to mix it up, okay? And then this is going to go across uh, my flower, popped up with a few dimensionals. So we're just gonna pop one and two on there and center that right over my flower. 
And then this is going to go centered inside my oval and it's also going to be popped up. Did I mention that I am a little bit addicted to dimensionals? If you've been watching for any length of time, you probably figured that out <laughs> by now. I tend to love my dimensionals. Hey, Debbie, how are you? I am great. I hope you are well. Looks like you girls had an awesome time on Saturday. Kind of jealous that I missed it. All right, so there is my popped up label and then I'm going to add a little bow. So here is your little twine bow tying lesson. Oh, Wendy, this sweet, honestly, this paper is fantastic. I can't even say enough. And these, these oval dies, oh, fantastic. All right, so here I have um, just, this is some of our linen thread, okay? And I'm this is my twine bow. So this is my knotless twine bow, okay? So I'm making a loop with uh, my twine just in my right hand. I'm taking the tail in my left hand, wrapping it around that loop and pulling it through. And there is my bow, okay? So I don't end up with a big bulky knot in the middle. It lies really, really flat and is quite, quite neat and tidy. I don't know why I have the hiccups all of a sudden, but I do. So now to glue this on, because this is such a teeny tiny um, fine twine, I'm actually going to take half a glue dot and I'm going to roll it in between my thumb and index finger and I'm going to press it where I want my bow to go. So now it's on my little strip and then I'm going to add my bow right there. Okay, and that's just big enough to hold my bow on but not be visible behind it so that I don't see it peeking out. Okay, and then the last touch on this because I felt like it needed a little something something. Um, we're going to add a little bit, a, a couple of little pearls. Christmas in July is fun, Wendy. We do Christmas in July too. I do a Christmas in July event. It's really, really fun. But I'm sure it's colder there. <laughs> It's very hot here when we do Christmas in July. I do Christmas baking and it's like 35 Celsius when I'm doing it. it never fails. Okay, so I'm just going to add a few little pearls. I forgot to bring my take your pick over, so I'm doing it the old-fashioned way with my scissors. Picking up a few pearls here and there. Just to add a little bit of, a little bit of bling to my thank you card. And we'll do one more. There we go. Maybe we'll put one right on here. How's that? There we go. Okay, really, really simple. Um, but again, it's the, the DSP and that awesome pedal washi that does all the talking on this. Hey, Michelle, how are ya? Oh, working on new punch art. Can't wait to see what you come up with. All right, so that is project number two. And now we're gonna move on to my favorite one. This is kind of an over the top, stepped up project. So these, the first two were pretty simple. This one really showcases a lot of the products in this suite and I just love it. So let me show you how I did this one. Grab all my goodies. Now I'm gonna talk for a minute about this embossed background. Okay, so I did this. I've already embossed it and I'll just pull it out of the kit here so you can see it. So I'm not sure how well it's going to show up on the camera, but this has been embossed with the new um, Scripty 3D um, embossing folder, okay? And the challenge with this is these embossing folders are not as thick as the Sizzix folders that um, we used to carry, okay? So you don't use the same sandwich that you would have used um, with your Big Shot with the old... Um, what were they called? Dynamic textured impressions folders. Okay. It is a beautiful wedding card, Amy. I, that's what I was kind of going for with this one. I have a few people that I know that are kind of doing like outdoor vintagey weddings and I just thought this would be really pretty. So I'm going to just explain a couple of things about how to get your best results with this. So Stampin' Up! has just come out with a new embossing plate that um, is meant to act as a shim to compensate for the um, the narrower folder, okay? Um, now I, ha I don't have that yet so I had to figure out how to make it work. So guess what I discovered? If you are old school like me and a little bit of a hoarder, um, you may still have the old Sizzix um, Big Shot platform. This is the one that has the tabs, okay? Do you remember this platform? Um, if you still have one of these, you are per in perfect shape to use these folders because I discovered that if I close all of my tabs, so I've got tab one and tab two closed, 
and I put my embossing folder and one cutting plate in and run it through my Big Shot, I get perfect results. So that is what I did to get this, okay? Now, if you don't have this platform, another way to do it is to take your regular platform, the newer platform, without the thin die adapter, and then cut yourself two pieces of cardboard. So this is the thicker cardboard that comes with our specialty DSP. So it, it actually comes with the uh, press pedals DS or the yes press pedals DSP. It comes with the mosaic DSP. Any of the specialty ones. Um, so it's thicker than the, the regular white um, cardboard, but it's not as thick as the stuff that comes with the glimmer paper. Okay, so it's kind of an in between weight. So I cut two pieces. It's six by eight. And I use those two pieces with my um, new platform and one cutting plate, and that also works, okay? So there's a couple of options. Um, if you don't wanna purchase the extra plate um, that is available now from Stampin' Up!, you can either use your old school uh, Big Shot platform or cut yourself a couple of pieces of cardboard and use it as a shim. Now, let me just mention that every Big Shot is set up differently, right? So the tension is gonna be a little bit different. So you're gonna to wanna to experiment. I would start with just one piece of cardboard and your embossing folder and a cutting plate and see how that works. If your Big Shot is tighter than mine, it might, it might just work, okay? If not, try a second one. If you feel like that's too tight, don't force it. Take one out and maybe add a layer of cardstock, okay? So experiment and be patient until you find something. Now, if you don't wanna mess around with that, the um, embossing plate is like $13 in Canada. It's pretty cheap and you don't even have to think about it. Okay, so those are some options for using these new embossing folders. All right, now let's get back to this card. So I have embossed this piece of cardstock. It is four by five and a quarter inches. It is crumb cake. And I am going to now bring out the detail in that embossed image. So now I'm gonna go back to my soft suede ink and my dauber. And I'm just going to ever so lightly emboss and just see how suddenly that pattern just pops out. It just like magically appears. So I'm just gonna go lightly over this whole area. And I probably don't need to do the middle because that's gonna get covered anyway. So I'm just gonna do the edges. But you see how it just brings that beautiful pattern out. There we go, just like that. Isn't that pretty? So pretty. Okay, so that's all there is to that. Hi, Martine, how are you doing? Hope you're having a good day. All right, so now we are going to go ahead and add our DSP. So again, I let the DSP do all the work on this card. So there is my embossed background. Here I have um, two three by four inch pieces cut from the same sheet, right? It's one's the front side, one's the back side, and they work perfectly together. And I'm just going to kind of glue them onto the front of my uh, embossed panel, just kind of cockeyed, one going one way and one going the other. And whenever I do this kind of thing, I like to use Tombow because I like having that little bit of wiggle time so that I can kind of get them the way I want them. So there's one. And let's do these so that they're right side up. There is two. Okay, just really simple. And now, oh, I'm glad you're having, you're doing well, Martine. That's excellent news. All right, so now I'm gonna bring in yet another one of these labels. I just love these labels. And I need my best wishes stamp. Where did I put my best wishes stamp? There it is. And I need my early espresso ink. So I'm gonna ink up my best wishes. And I'm gonna stamp this one right smack on the center of my label, I hope. I'm not having a lot of luck today with stamping off to the side. Well, that one's better, there we go. Okay, it is beautiful paper, Martine. It is absolutely stunning paper. Love, love, love it. Okay, now there's my label. Now, if you look on my original, I created the illusion of two flowers sort of peeking out from behind. Now this is actually just three petals, okay? And so what I did, and you have to remember that your petals are sticky on the back side, right? But I want these to stick, the front side of these to stick to my label. So what I did is I just took and put a little bit of fast fuse on there, and then I'm gonna peel my petals off. 
and I'm going to stick one kind of there. Okay, and I want it to stick to that fast fuse. And then I'm going to add another one. And I'm going to offset it a little bit so it looks just like it's peeking out. And then one more on the other side. Come here. Just like that. Okay. Whoopsie. Stay put. They're sticking to my fingers. Now, this can be problematic, right? They're sticking to me rather than to the paper. So you know what you do? You get rid of the stick. So here I have my poor embossing buddy that almost has, is almost like has no powder in it, but it's got just enough that if I take that and I just kind of slap it onto those petals, I'm going to take away that sticky. Now they're not sticky anymore. Okay. And I won't have the problem of them sticking to me and not to my label. Okay. So now I'm going to do the same thing on this bottom corner. I'm going to add three more petals. Oh, Martine, this petal washi, I'm telling you, it is fantastic. No gardening ability required to grow beautiful flowers with this stuff, let me tell you. So we'll add another petal this way. Deflated buddy, no good, I know. I actually have several embossing buddies. This is the one that I kind of use for things like this, where I know I'm just gonna be wasting a lot of the powder from it. Um, I have several embossing buddies that are not quite so sad looking. But this guy, he's been through the war. He's my original. So again, I'm just gonna take and just dab them on there, get some of that powder going and get rid of some of the sticky. Okay, and then when I turn it over, look at that. Pretty, pretty, pretty. So we'll get rid of that poor little buddy, set him aside. And then we are gonna go ahead and add this to the front of our card. Now, before I do that, oh, I almost forgot my lace. So because I was thinking this was gonna be a wedding card, Weddings are all about lace, right? So I took a little bit, this is the Very Vanilla Scalloped Lace. This is new in the catalog this year as well. And I just took a little strip, so this is not even four inches. And I'm just gonna put a little bit of Fast Fuse across here. And I'm gonna stick that down, just like that, okay? I'm not worrying about wrapping the ends, I just kinda want it there as a little bit of an accent. You're not gonna see a lot of it because the label's gonna cover it. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and add some dimensionals. I'm going to put one right over those petals there. And I think I'm going to put one over here as well so that they stay put. And peel off my backings. And then we're going to pop this right on here, just above the lace. I just kind of wanted the lace to be peeking out the bottom. And I just noticed there's a little bit that, a little bit that didn't pop out when I I cut that there we go okay pretty 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 next I'm gonna take my card base so this is again crumb cake it is five and a half by eight and a half so my dimensions for all my bases today are the same easy to remember scored in the middle at four and a quarter oh yes Amy don't toss your dead buddies you keep your dead buddies the name of the kit this is the pressed petals suite Martine it is simply gorgeous 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 page 73 74 I believe in the catalog so I folded my card base in half and then I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of fast fuse and we're gonna pop this onto the front just like that okay almost done but not quite we need to add our little bow so this is some of the Mossy Meadow Baker's Twine. This is part of the Magnolia uh, Magnolia Lane ribbon bundle, okay? You get that gorgeous linen ribbon and then you get some of this, linen, this uh, Mossy Meadow linen thread. So again, I'm gonna tie a double bow. I don't know if I've shown you a double bow before, but it's essentially uh, the same basic technique as tying a single. So I've got a pretty long piece that I'm gonna fold in half, okay? I like working right off the spool because then I don't waste as much. So I'm gonna make my double loop. So I've got my, it's a double piece, right? I'm gonna make my loop, hold it in my, in my right hand. I'm taking the tail with my left, bringing it around and through here, okay? Super easy way to make cute double bows. And then what I wanna do, because I've got two lengths of, of thread here, I just wanna pull one a little bit more than the other and that accentuates uh, and creates two different size loops, right? And that just accentuates the fact that it's a double bow. 
and I don't want my loops to be too obviously different size so I'm gonna fix that because I don't like the look of that there we go and we'll pull this one a little bit that big guy's a little too big there we go okay super simple and cute I'm gonna trim off my tails get that out of the way and then we're gonna take a whole glue dot this time Actually, no, we're not. We're going to take our little key. So this is another one of these little bird ballad trinkets. I'm really, really digging these, and I think they work really, really well with this suite. So again, I kind of made a little little blob of glue dot there, and I'm going to press the end of the key into the glue dot, and then I'm just going to press it onto my, my card here, and then I'm going to take a second glue dot and stuck to my thumb. I didn't want to stick to my thumb just yet. That's okay. We'll press our bow into that and then we'll stick it right onto the end of the key just like that. Okay. Isn't that pretty? Really, really simple. Oh, Martine, you are going to love this suite. Honestly, it is just, it's so beautiful. And that washi tape, this stuff, huh? <laughs> I might, I think I might, I might cause it to go on back order myself because I love it so much. Okay. All right. So those were simple, but pretty, right? And these, like this suite is just beyond beautiful. I'll just put all three cards down here again for you to, to see all three. Um, and then again, I'll bring in that little um, journal that I decorated as well. So there's another idea that gives you the little journal. Okay. Thanks for the hearts, everybody. Glad you like them. All right, so if you would like to order this suite, you can do it at my website, lenagursa.stampinup.net. I will put the link in the description in a little while. Otherwise, if you have another demonstrator that you're working with, please order from them. I appreciate you watching, and I hope you have an awesome day, and I will see you again next week for another Tuesday Live at 5. Bye for now.